I've been unemployed for several months after my employer performed company-wide layoffs due to increasing interest rates. I've applied to almost 300 positions and interviewed with 10. I've received zero offers. I most recently held a senior data scientist role, have a STEM master's, and I have around a decade of experience. Everywhere I look, it seems like people are having a really hard time landing data jobs. On Reddit and in my YouTube comments, I'm seeing everyone from beginners all the way to seasoned experts struggling to land roles. This begs the question, how bad is the data science job market? Is it hopeless to land a job in the field, or is it more promising than many people are making it out to be? Let's dive into the data and see. I'll look into the overall trend in the market, what types of roles are hiring, and even what companies specifically are hiring at the very end, so you'll wanna be sure to stay tuned for that. Data related to the data science specific job market was very difficult to find, so please bear with me, I did the best I could with what I could scrounge up from a couple different resources. The first data I found on the job market was from the interview query blog, which I've linked in the description below. It only goes through March of this year, but it still helps to paint a decent year over year picture of the job market for data roles. From March, 2022 to March, 2023, we see that there's a massive decrease in job postings from big tech companies known under the acronym FANG while other companies have actually increased their hiring by a few percentage points. There is about the same number of job postings available overall in the market as there were in the previous year, and that's because non-FANG companies make up a far larger proportion of total jobs than the FANG ones that are shown in the graphs here. I'm sure you're thinking, well, well Ken, this is old data. What about now? I bet the market has completely fallen off a cliff since March. This is where some great data that I got from Luke Barus comes into play. I've linked his video and his tool datanerd.tech in the description if you wanna play with this data yourself. We can look at where the interview query data leaves off and see how the market has changed since then. It looks like since March, the job market really did take a dive until May, at least in the number of total job postings available in Luke's data. On the other hand, now it looks like it's starting to recover. If we look at this critically, we can see that perhaps much of the negative sentiment around the job market is a remnant of the massive low point during May. This could be promising for people who are still in the market as it does seem like it's trying to correct. I do want to note that Luke's data and the interview query data are from different sources, so there are obviously discrepancies in the numbers here. However, this is still the best quality data that I could find. Now let's take a look at this by role. This might be surprising, but there are far more data engineering opportunities than data scientist or data analyst positions. All these roles seem to be following the same upward trend after a low point in either April or May. Just like many companies can't seem to get enough data engineers, we can never have enough likes for the YouTube algorithm, so if you're finding this useful, feel free to drop one. Let's also explore the seniority of positions that are being hired for. Not sure if this is a surprise or not, but there are significantly more non-senior roles that are being hired for in the market. This is across the board for data engineers, for analysts, and for data scientists. Unfortunately, this data doesn't show the demand on the other side of the market. So if you're applying for a junior role and it seems saturated, it's likely because the supply of entry-level talent is far greater than that of senior-level talent. A quick Google trend search for entry-level data jobs does anecdotally suggest that the supply of people interested in these could be increasing since the beginning of the year. This could explain some of the difficulties landing entry-level data jobs, especially in May of this year. I think that many people might say, this is true for the US, but that's not true for where I live. The, the job market where I live is still terrible. So let's take a look at some other common places for data jobs. Admittedly, again, this data is collected from global job posts Posting websites, not local ones, so it might not be completely representative. This is the list of job postings for the top 10 countries with the most postings since December. Obviously, the US and all other countries outside of the top 10 in aggregate carry the brunt of the jobs, but let's explore what jobs are looking like in some of these other countries. Again, it appears that May really was the bottoming out point for almost every country, and the majority of them are rebounding reasonably well. Now I wanted to explore a little hypothesis as well. So let's look at non full-time positions because I know many of you are applying for internships or also part-time work. Although it does look like contract positions did take a downturn in July, this could very likely be related to six month contract positions being filled or removed for the second half of the year. I find it pretty interesting to see the stability of contract or part-time work during the largest downturns, considering many people believe contract work to be less reliable than full-time work. 
Let me know if you want a video about my views around the redefinition of the modern contractor in the comments below. We saw from the interview query data that big tech has dramatically lowered their postings. What companies are demanding the most jobs right now? These are the top 20 or so that are hiring the most positions. It looks like it's mostly large companies, many in the consulting and financial services. You'll notice that FANG, or I guess the other acronym is manga companies that we've mentioned earlier, they're not any of them in the top 20. Actually, the only ones that crack the top 100 are Apple and Amazon in the 33rd and 95th spot, respectively. What does this all mean? Even though we'd always love higher quality data, I think the job postings do tell an interesting story. The job market really did get quite bad during May, but everything that I'm seeing suggests that it's rebounding almost uniformly across the board. To me, this suggests that this is probably a cyclical downturn, not a structural one. At least I don't have any evidence of structural change in demand for the roles as of right now. There also seems to be a greater overall need for data people in industry, finance, and consulting compared to big tech. If you are in the market for a job and have been stressed about the market and the future of this career, Hopefully this video paints a bit more of a data-driven and complete picture of what's happening. I myself am a bit more optimistic about the improvement of many of the circumstances in this domain based on what I'm seeing from this data in the market. I'm going to do a more complete analysis on the data industry and a video on my recommendations for landing a job if we face another month like May again in the future. So be sure to subscribe to be alerted when those drop. Until next time, good luck on your data science journey.